Welcome to the sixth video in the series, 12 Steps to Spiritual Freedom. In this video, Peter will begin by explaining that Martha has an ego, but she is not her ego. This process is not designed to shame Martha. It is designed to free her from the ego. Let's listen in. The reason I've been talking about your ego is because you have an ego, but you are not your ego. You are not the natural person you think you are. You are spiritual within the natural. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh. The process we're going through is not only the ego deflation process, it's also the separating who you really are, which is love, a spirit within the natural, which is the heart of flesh. We're in that process of separating the two out, dividing the tare and the wheats. And right now you're identified with the ego. So when I say the ego gave the gift in order to get back its drug, the ego, you're shining the light in the ego. The ego's recoiling. It's embarrassed and ashamed. Uh, the good news is that's not you. The recoiling and shame is in the same ego that has been doing the entire thing. We are taking you out of that and freeing you to look at the ego. In step six, we're going to be saying, would you be willing to let go of it? Okay. Ask God to take it from you so you can be free of the ego, its resentment, its anger, and its shame. The whole thing, is going to be, you can be freed from that. That's what the process is, to make you free. It isn't to shame you. It isn't to make the ego be a good ego, a well-behaved ego. All right. It's to separate you from that. Separate. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And then there's a column say, what did I do, if anything, in order to set this thing up? And we're really looking at where was our responsibility? Sometimes there's very little. Sometimes there's a lot. Sometimes there's just an expectation. In this case, it might be an expectation. I, I would say there was an expectation that I didn't even realize. I mean, yeah. wasn't... Until it was opposed, it felt like love. Right. And had he come and ex exuberantly, you know, thanked you, you may have even spent the rest of the day thinking that was love. Right. And the ego just had inflated a little and you didn't even know because it wasn't opposed. That's why God has arranged the world to oppose our ego. Oh, is that what he's done? <laughs> That's why it's a divine impossibility to satisfy it. That's why all, all addictions are progressively addictive and destructive. They're going to hit that point where you can no longer satisfy them. They'll turn around and show their true colors. And then that's when he asks your higher power for help. So at the very end, which is the most important column, is where was your ego? Not you. Where was your ego being selfish, self-centered, inconsiderate, fearful, and dishonest? And they're all on the sheet. You didn't answer each one. So just in general, where was your ego's response, selfish and self-centered? In the whole activity. Yeah. From the present to the cake made to the evening. Well, I would say in response when he opened it and said thank you, and that wasn't <laughs> enough. In that response, where was your ego being selfish and self-centered and considered fearful of dishonest? So basically what we're trying to identify is the cause in the 12-step program of the need to medicate with alcohol or anything else is our self-centeredness in the extreme. So it's love of the self, love of the world that can't be gratified whenever they aren't gratified or they're threatened. That ego, which is those loves, you know, in summary, reacts in a negative and hostile defensive way. And that does make any relationship hell. and your life hell and unmanageable. So once you've identified this, is where was my ego and its response being selfish and self-centered? It was all about me, you had said. And that's it. It's always about me. It's self-centered. The world is about me. It holds itself in the center of the world. Mm -hmm. And the world should serve it. Mm -hmm. And God should serve it. And God won't serve it, and the world won't serve it, and it's going to be angry. And if you stay in that, your life becomes very limited, very contracted. And the spiritual path and the 12-step path is just an efficient way to do it, is would you like to be free from that? So that you can take your proper place in the world and be an instrument of God's love in order to bring His love and His wisdom and His healing to others. So that's the process we're trying to do is free us of the ego so that we can really serve God. In step two, Peter helped Martha understand that a power greater than herself could free her from thinking the thoughts and acting from the feelings generated by the ego. In step three, Peter encouraged Martha to let God take over. She agreed to do this. In step four, Peter led Martha through a self-examination process in which she was encouraged to be totally honest about what actually happened. 
As we will see in the next video, Martha's honesty will open the way for God to lead her away from ego and into spiritual freedom.